Alright, head on the ice. Gonna see if we can find some crappie today. So, see how that goes. Alright, starting off here in 10 foot of water, I see a little bit of weeds, which is kind of what I'm looking for. Because he's crappie. See what we can drum up. The business. Gonna tip a little chartreuse Swedish pimple with a maggot or two. See if we can get a bite going. There we go. Oh yeah, there's our first crappie of the day right there. They are crappie. Nice. Look at that. That's what I'm here for. Beautiful little crappie. That's a black crappie. They're biting light, so I think I'm gonna switch to a tungsten jig though. If I can get another one of these. Alright. All right, I'm gonna tie on a tungsten jig here just real quick. And go with some smaller present smaller presentation. Alright, so I just got a little tungsten jig there. Tiger striped. Tip that with a maggot. I see another fish just on the screen here, so hopefully that's some more crappie. Here comes a fish looking at it. Oh, I missed him. They are biting so light right now. There we go, got him. Another nice crappie, there we go. Beautiful. That's what I'm after today. They are just biting super light. Gorgeous. That's actually a good sized crappie. See, ate that jig. Mm, beautiful. Put that kind of crappie all day long. Alrighty. Back down there. Get another going. Crappie sometimes, it seems like you get that best bite right after the first drop. And they really commit. There we go, got him. Another beautiful crappie. So these fish are coming up off the bottom and staring at that jig for a long time and then just a little bit of twitching seems to get them to bite. So when I'm looking for ice fishing for crappie, I really like early season. So just after the ice forms, like today it's four and a half, five inches of ice. I also like late season. I'm typically going to start in weed beds, um, especially early season. Late season, sometimes they'll move out deep. Um, so typically early season I'm fishing you know, six to ten foot of water um, in most of the lakes that I fish in north central Washington, but late season I've got them as deep as 50 feet or more. There's a whole bunch of fish on the screen right now. Just, ooh, I missed that bite. Oh, come on Tyler, get your game together. I'm watching that spring bottle really tightly. There's a nibble on it. Yeah, they're tough to detect that bite. They're just inhaling it and not swimming with it. There we go. Another nice crappie. Awesome. Beautiful looking fish. So while we start shallow, one of the things I notice is uh, later in the season as the vegetation starts to rot, if I drill a hole and I get sort of brown, murky water where the uh, normally clear lake, that means the vegetation's starting to break down. That's a good spot to target crappie. They'll be in there feeding on those invertebrates associated with that decaying vegetation. However, if your lake has an oxygen issue in the winter, 
um, sometimes they'll avoid those areas and go deep looking for oxygen because that rotting vegetation has a lot of bacteria that's consuming all that oxygen and sometimes the fish just can't handle being in, in there even though that's where the food resources are. And as for tackle, uh, small spoons, small jigs work really well for crappie. I really like chartreuse for crappie. It's a good color. They seem to respond positively to it. Um, but most importantly is a very sensitive rod. Now this rod has a titanium spring bobber built into it. This is a custom rod from Thorn Brothers out of Minnesota. As you'll notice I'm swinging and missing a lot because they will just, they got that big mouth, they'll just swim up, suck it in and just sit there and then once they start to move you detect that bite but man they are finicky biters at times here comes a fish one coming in <laughs> see if I can get him to come back there we go, got him ooh that's a really nice crappie there these are very healthy looking fish. Come here, bud. There you go. Beautiful. Right in the top, every time. There's no limits on a lot of our lakes in Washington, although like some lakes do have limits on crappie or size restrictions. This lake does not. Um, but. They don't look too stunted in here, so there's no reason to over-harvest. I'm just going to take home around 10 fish for myself today. Have a nice stir-fry with crappie, maybe some crappie curry. Or I might just bread it and fry it old school. Another nice crappie. There we go. So there's a lot of lakes in Washington that you can target crappie through the ice. Uh, today I'm at Patterson Lake, but you can also hit Aloika Lake near Spokane, Whitestone Lake, Palmer Lake, there are also good lakes that have good crappie populations that typically ice over. Sometimes Banks Lake, Moses Lake. And Leader Lake near the town of Okanagan. Those are all excellent lakes for crappie. And depending on the year, some of those lakes will have ice and many of the lakes will have ice. Well, I'm starting to skinny out with this school, I think. A lot less activity at this slot. So I do tend to move around a lot when I'm crappie fishing. If I don't get anything 10-15 minutes, I'll bump to another hole. Sometimes you don't have to move far and you can get into another nice school. Got some fish. Got him. Got him, got him, got him. I tell you that fish finder makes all the difference. I mean I can see the fish come in, I can prepare. A lot of times they won't hit it, the crappie won't hit it when you're jigging it. That's a little guy, I think I'm gonna throw him back. Um, but if you hold it still for just a second, they will take it, They'll suck it in. I'm gonna send that little guy back. A little small for my taste. There he goes. Turn around everybody, there you go. Oop. I have a really good video on how to use these uh, sonar flashers on these, these Helix units by Hummingbird. Um, I'll post the link up above. It's a really good investment if uh, you plan on spending any time on the ice and then you can also put it on your boat during open water season. So when I'm putting these maggots on these jigs, you want to make sure that you um, pinch one. I like all the the guts and stuff to kind of come out. Scent, put a little scent out in that water, so 
Don't thread them all there nice and clean. Sometimes, sometimes having those guts hanging off puts out a little scent in the water. Makes it a little tastier when they slurp it in. Okay, so that first spot produced seven really nice crappie for me and a few bonus perch, as well as some bass and bluegill. But the last half hour I haven't pulled a single crappie out. Crappie do school together and they move around on these flats and weed beds. So I'm just gonna bump out about 20 feet, see if we can relocate them. If I can't, I'll start drilling holes systematically, see if we can't relocate these fish. And sometimes, even after a half hour or so, or an hour, I'll come back to the original hole that I had good luck in, some new fish have moved back in. So it's all about covering ground and finding those schools that are feeding, um, but they will move on and you've got to chase them. There we go. That's a fish. Oh yeah, that's another nice crappie. Look at that. It's definitely slowing down later in the afternoon. They do bite. <clears throat> they do bite at night, um, early morning and evening best. But that's where it pays to have uh, the right gear in the daytime when this bite's really light, like it is right now. Um, so I'm using a braided six-pound fire line from Berkeley in black. And uh, I like it because it doesn't gather up all that much ice and very sensitive, no stretch. Uh, so I can detect those bites. And then I have this spring bobber here. This is a titanium spring bobber tied into the rod. Um, but you can buy aftermarket spring bobbers. You really just need a light or medium light rod for, for crappie. Because um, you're not going to be fishing. Oh, there's a fish. There it is, got it. There's another nice crappie. Ooh, yeah. Now, I've been moving around, but I've been hole hopping. Most holes are not producing anything but bass and bluegill. Once you get into these schools of crappie, like I am right now, the bite can be pretty fast and furious. That's number nine keepers. I'm just gonna keep 10 today, because honestly I don't like spending all afternoon cleaning fish. 10's a nice, even number. Let's see if we can get another one here. I've been out on the ice now for an hour without a bite, and I think it's time to go into town and get a warm sandwich. Uh, these crappie probably will start biting um, again in the afternoon, late afternoon, evening hours, and into the night, but I'm really happy with the nine keeper fish that I got. Really encourage you to take advantage of some of these amazing uh, ice fishing uh, for crappie opportunities we have in Washington State. These are some beautiful fish that taste delicious and they're a lot of fun to catch. So I hope the next time you get out on the ice, you have a really crappy time. And remember, four inches of ice is what you need to be safe. Have a great ice fishing season and I'll see you out on the water.